Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. There is a friend who will never leave you. There is a friend on whom you can always depend. There is a friend who will never forsake you and who will always be faithful to abide with you. That friend is the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk to you about the love of the Holy Spirit and how it can dramatically transform your life. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting into this message. Participate with this worship now. Watch this. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. Now, I know I often talk about the Holy Spirit. It's part of the mandate that God has given to me. Of course, I believe in preaching the gospel of salvation. That's my primary mandate as an evangelist. But when it comes to my assignment to the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit made it very clear to me. God the Father spoke to me. I've called you to introduce my Holy Spirit to your generation. So people ask me often, why do you talk about the Holy Spirit so much? John chapter 16, verse 14 says, He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. People say things like, why don't you focus on Jesus? And I do. But you have to understand that in order to see Jesus, in order to have that revelation of the Son of God, in order to truly connect with the Master, you must go through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the way to the Father, and the Holy Spirit is the way to the Son. When you focus on the Holy Spirit, he turns your focus to Jesus. You cannot see Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. You can't just skip over Him. He is the one who gives you that revelation. He is the one who opens your eyes. And so while I'm talking about the Holy Spirit right now, you all must also understand that I do believe in the Father. I do believe in the Son. I want to make that perfectly clear. But right now I want to emphasize this one reality. And that is that the Holy Spirit is jealous over you. Now, I know what you might be thinking. That word jealous can seem like an ugly word. In fact, it's been turned into an ugly word, especially in our culture. For those of you who've suffered abuse in relationships, for those of you who've been mentally and emotionally anguished as the result of someone else's jealousy, you understand that jealousy can be destructive. So I'm not trying to deny the fact that jealousy can be an evil, destructive thing. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, His jealousy is holy. And I'll tell you the difference between holy jealousy and ungodly jealousy in just a moment. First, let's read this verse, James chapter 4, verse number 5. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the Scripture says He yearns jealously over the Spirit that He has made to dwell in us. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. When the Holy Spirit came to dwell in you, he became united with your spirit. There's no two natures within you. There's no dual nature in you. You are one nature, and that is the nature of the spirit. That otherworldly being that we call the flesh, though it is still alive, it's not you. It's not your identity. But the Holy Spirit in you yearns toward and, 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 and pulls on jealously the Spirit within you. Your Spirit and the Holy Spirit know deep fellowship with one another. Now, these things are deep things of the Spirit, so they may be hard to receive. This is why you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to receive the truth that is being communicated. So this particular truth seems shocking to some. As I said, that word jealousy seems to be this evil word, especially in our culture. But you have to remember that godly jealousy demands what belongs to it based on love. Ungodly jealousy demands what does not belong to it based on fear. When I think of ungodly jealousy, I think of 
abusive spouses. I think of clingy people in relationships who pull on you in an unhealthy way, who become angry if you do anything, think anything, or go anywhere or communicate with anyone that doesn't involve them. That is a very unhealthy jealousy. And typically people who practice this form of unhealthy jealousy are themselves very insecure, very empty, very broken people. But the kind of jealousy I'm talking about is godly jealousy, godly jealousy that is based on love. It doesn't demand or threaten. It, it calls to, it invites. Think about this. What spouse would not become jealous if they found their spouse, their husband or their wife, out to dinner with someone who they weren't married to? If you found out your spouse was cheating, would you not be jealous? Would you not be angry? This is what God declared over Israel. God the Father's bride is Israel. God the Son's bride is the church. They, they have their brides in us. They have their, their, their connection to us that's based on love. And when we violate that connection, when we violate that, that, that relationship, that covenant, that union, it causes that stir of jealousy within God. Now, the jealousy of God can sometimes be spurred on by his, his, his justice and by, by his, his more fierce side, but it's still an act of love. Again, I know this is difficult for some to receive because we've been programmed to think of that word jealousy in a certain way. But I want you to realize that any action that God takes is always done in love and with redemption in mind. So when we stray from him, he longs for us. When, when we go off into our distracted worlds, He calls to us. When we are busy throughout our day, He invites us. He waits for the moment for you to stop, to pause, to acknowledge His presence. God is not needy. God is not clingy. But God does love you. The Holy Spirit does love you. Think about that. We know God the Father loves you. We know God the Son loves you. But have you ever really stopped to think about the fact that the Holy Spirit loves you? And he yearns jealously for you. I remember one time when my daughter was first born, this is probably she was about three months old. I'm holding my Aria in my arms, just looking down at her face. I just was getting lost in that precious little face. And for some reason or another, every time I'm holding my Aria, I'm, I'm inspired to sing to her. And so it might not be the best performance in the world, but I do it out of love. And so I was holding my aria, and I'm looking down at her little face. She's looking up at me, and I'm just singing to her. I'm singing to her songs. And out of nowhere, it was so odd, out of nowhere, this worship song comes to my mind. It's a song that's very simple. The lyrics are, I love you, I love you, I love you, my Lord. That's all there is to it. And it's a simple worship song, not necessarily one of the most popular songs in the world, but it's, it's a... It's a fairly known song. And I thought it was odd that I was thinking about that song while holding Ari. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to sing a worship song to my daughter because I don't worship her. I love her. I adore her. But it felt weird to me that that thought should come into my mind. It felt odd to me that that song should come into my mind. So I ignored it and I kept singing to my Aria. And then again, the song comes to my mind. And I'm thinking, why is this so persistent on my mind right now? So I didn't think anything of it again until the next day. I'm in a church service. It's an evening service. I wasn't there to minister. I was just there to serve and support a man of God. And so I'm, I'm in the service. And out of nowhere, they begin to sing that song. And I thought, how interesting that I was just thinking about this song yesterday. And now the worship team is playing this song. And it's such an obscure song. It's, it's a song that very few people know, relatively speaking. Of course, I'm comparing it to the songs that pretty much are sung in every church. And I thought, how odd that I would think of that song yesterday that I never hear anybody singing. How odd that I would think of that song yesterday, and then today I'm standing in the worship service, and all of a sudden they're singing this song. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, I want you to sing it to me. And then I realized that when I was holding my aria and singing to her, the Holy Spirit was pulling on me and putting that song in my heart. He was inviting me and he was saying, sing to me too. Put your focus on me too. I was shaken by that revelation that the Holy Spirit would so gently pull like that. 
And again, I must emphasize, it's not that he's needy, it's that he enjoys your presence. I wrote in my book, Carriers of the Glory, years ago, that the Holy Spirit longs to be in your presence more than you long to be in his. Think about that. Did, did, you, did you use your power to bring about the incarnation of the Word of God? Did you go through years of convicting? And did you go through years of, of inviting and pooling? And did you go through years of revealing in order to find the Holy Spirit? No, He came to you. He sought after you. You are His treasure. You are His You belong to the Holy Spirit. So when he sees us doing things that aren't glorifying to Jesus, when he sees us listening to things, or he hears our conversations, or he knows our thoughts, or when we go places we know we shouldn't go, he becomes jealous. He thinks, you weren't meant for that. You weren't created for that. And he wants to rescue us from our distractions. He wants to call us away in this hour to know the depths of His Spirit, to know the depths of His love. And what begins to happen when we respond to that love is incredible. Think about what Jesus said when He was asked what the greatest commandment was. And I'm paraphrasing here. He basically said the first and greatest commandment, love God with all that you are. And love your neighbor. The second, love your neighbor as yourself. That was the second commandment, the second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. So the first commandment, the greatest commandment, is love God with all that you are. The second commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. The second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself, meaning I cannot love my neighbor if I don't love myself. And I cannot love myself if I don't love God. I must learn first and foremost to love God above all else, love Him above myself, love Him above my wife, love Him above my children, Love Him above all others. My grandmother, a missionary to Russia when I was a kid, sat me on the bathroom counter. I I will never forget this. I don't know, I think she was combing my hair or something, but she sits me on the bathroom counter and she begins to explain to me that she loves Jesus more than she loves me. Now, today, if you tell that to a child, society will react in horror. They'll say, how could you do that? You'll traumatize the poor child. It's not so... I think uh, sometimes we can be a little too sensitive on these matters. Instead, I received a valuable lesson. I didn't take offense to my grandmother telling me this. I didn't think, oh my goodness, my grandma loves Jesus more than she loves me. What a horrible thing. This is what I thought. I thought, wow, my grandma really, really, really loves me. So she must really, 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 really love Jesus. That was the thought that came to my mind. It wasn't that I was offended. I was inspired by how much she loved Jesus. Let me me tell you something. The love of the Spirit is first and foremost. The love of Jesus, the love of the Holy Spirit, that's first and foremost. You must love Him first. You must love Him more than your spouse. You must love Him more than your children. You must love Him more than yourself, more than your ministry, more than your business, more than your plans, your dreams, your goals. You must love Him above all else. I know it's a hard thing to hear, but it's actually quite liberating once you realize that by loving Him first, you're then capable of loving everyone around you with divine love. If you don't love Him first, you're loving everyone else on your own strength. Your patience only goes far as you can handle. Your kindness only goes far as you can handle. I was watching this incredible testimony of a woman who, whose daughter was murdered. And instead of hating the murderer, she took him on and claimed him as a son. I thought, what love is this? That the one who murdered a child is accepted as a son. That they're allowed to take the place of that child. That, what love is that? That's the love of the Spirit. These are things we cannot do on our own. When you begin to love in the love of the Spirit, you go above and beyond what you're capable of doing. You love people with the love of the Spirit, and you love the Lord with the love of the Spirit. Romans chapter 5, verse 5 says, The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit gives us that love. Now think about this, think about this, think about this. The Bible says that the first and greatest commandment 
is to love God with all that you are. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said that if you follow these commandments, if you can keep these commandments, you've basically kept the whole of the law and the prophets. That's a powerful statement. In other words, by keeping the commandment of love, I keep all other commandments. If I love my neighbor, I'm not going to lie to my neighbor. If I love God, I'm not going to sin. Love is the motivating factor. People ask, how can that be? Well, think about how you drive a car. Your foot does not move that car. Your foot presses down on the pedal. Now, by pressing the pedal, you activate the engine, and the engine does all the work to move the car. You see, that engine represents the law and the prophets and all of the complexities of God's commands. But that pedal in the car represents the law of love by the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is fulfill the love, and when you fulfill the law of love, it activates everything else in your life. The Holy Spirit is the key to loving God. The Holy Spirit is the key to loving people. Nobody loves Jesus like the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. And if you will let him, he will teach you to love Jesus like he loves Jesus. Nobody loves people like the Holy Spirit loves people. And if you will let him, he will teach you to love people the way he loves people. It is the love of the Spirit at work in your life that causes you to love divinely. Love divinely. That you might surpass the limitations of the carnal nature, the carnal thinking, and that you might enter into the trueness, the purity, the fullness of the love of God. It's not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. He's the one who helps you to forgive. He's the one who helps you to demonstrate patience. He's the one who helps you to walk in holiness because holiness comes from loving Jesus more than you love sin. Do you realize that's the key to overcoming sin? It's not just discipline. It's not just willpower. The key to overcoming sin is loving Jesus more than you love sin. And so the Holy Spirit invites you today to receive of His love that you might love God and love others with all that you are, that we might not invoke His jealousy, but that we would be fully His because we belong to Him, because He gave Himself for us, because He deserves to reap the reward of His suffering. We are His, and He is lovingly jealous over us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you help us to receive this word I lift that one to you now who is seeking your face, who wants to know the depth of your love, who wants to love people like you love people, who wants to love God like you love God, Holy Spirit. You love Jesus. Help us to love Jesus. And I pray right now that by the Spirit, the power of God would begin to flow. In the name of Jesus, there's a woman watching me. You're wearing something pink and yellow. And there's an issue with your eyes that you've been struggling with for about two or three years. And it's, it's like a fogginess in your eyes. I rebuke that sickness now in the name of Jesus. In fact, I don't know why, but I just felt the healing anointing come on me. And I just heard right now, this very moment, the Holy Spirit say, tell them it's because I love them that I want to heal them. So stretch your hand toward mine. Precious Holy Spirit, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your power, and I pray you touch each one who's believing for healing. In the name of Jesus, diabetes goes in the name of Jesus. Sickness goes in the name of Jesus. Back pain goes in the name of Jesus. Blood disorders go in the name of Jesus. I rebuke asthma right now in the name of the Lord. Lord, we pray and agree for healing right now. Let healing virtue flow in the name of Jesus. If you believe you've been healed, Go to your doctor, have them check you, and we want to hear your testimony. There's a, a tremendous anointing that just came on um, this, this studio right now. I can't explain it. It's the love of the Holy Spirit in action. So receive that today. Well, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Look, Spirit Church is over 12,000 members strong right now. P 
people from all over the world consider this their online church, and we want to invite you to join our community. Now, I am encouraging many of you, maybe you've been led to do this, to begin to open up spirit church locations in your home, in your place of business, in your coffee shop, in your dorm room. Just begin to invite people. All you have to do, it's simple. You invite people, say, hey, do you want to have church at my house? Invite them over and play the video from start to finish, and you just had church in your home. And I believe that these spirit church locations are going to begin to pop up everywhere. There's no, there's no, um, there's no oppressive structure to this. Just go and spread the church. Be the church. Open up a spirit church in your house. Open up a spirit church in your garage. Open up a spirit church at your school, in your favorite coffee shop. As I said, anywhere and everywhere. Do it today. Start inviting your friends. Say, hey, on Sundays, let's start gathering together and we'll watch these clips together. And if you want me to send you the video or you want to watch those videos on your own, all you have to do is become a member. It's 100% free. And every Sunday, depending upon your time zone, it may differ, but every Sunday, California time, I send out a brand new teaching from the Word of God. And Stephen Moctezuma does a beautiful worship cover. And that is that can be your church service. And then you can have the fellowship with all the believers there with you. I encourage you to do this because I really think this is the way of the future. I think, I think house churches are beginning to make a real resurgence. And I think it's a real big part of God's plan. Not that I discount larger churches. There's different people who have different callings. But we need to uh, respond in the way that we can. So I encourage you, begin to open house churches with Spirit Church. But you can join today. You don't have to hold church, uh, you know, church in your house. You can keep it just for you if you want for now. Maybe you're not led to do that quite yet. Either way, whether you want to open up a spirit church in your house or whether you want to just receive the content, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch right now. Again, it's absolutely free. Last week, I taught on the tangible anointing, which means the physical manifested power of God. And during that teaching last week, I felt the anointing of the Holy Spirit manifest in the studio and it began to touch people right where they were as they watched the teaching. So God is doing something fresh for sure. I encourage you, if you haven't done it yet, go watch that clip. And at the end of the teaching, I pray for you to receive an encounter with God right there in your home. And many people have testified that it broke out in their houses. So the glory of God is visiting homes through that teaching. And while you're at it, since you're going to go check that teaching out, make sure you also subscribe if you're watching here on YouTube and click that notification bell so that you can receive the latest from Encounter TV and that you receive the notice. If you're watching on Facebook, follow me on Facebook. However you're receiving this content, connect with us on those social media platforms. And last but not least, if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. So here are the comments from last week's teaching, The Tangible Anointing. Michelle Hamilton writes, Thank you, Brother David, for this anointed teaching. As you were praying, I felt the tangible presence and peace of the Lord flow through my body. May God continue to bless your ministry. To God be the glory. Rita Choi writes, I felt the tangible power of God flowing to my hands while watching this sermon. Amazing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And this is the Holy Spirit's channel. Jennifer Cabrera writes, I felt the electricity flow in my entire body first from my feet all the way up. Then when I repeated the prayer, the electricity came from my heart. Child of Light 5778 writes, When listening to this, I felt a warmth in my belly. I also felt something flowing into my hands as David was praying at the end of the lesson. And finally, Chizoba Nijaka writes, Thank you so much for giving me this message for free because it is meant for me. I know God really wants me to serve him and I am ready to do so. Well, Chizoba wrote that they thanked us um, for giving away the content for free. And you know why we do that. We give away the content for free because freely we've received, so freely we give. I don't ever want to charge for the content. That's not... Uh, what I think God is calling us to do, nor do I ever charge for our miracle services. I don't think we should be placing fees to enter the house of God. I'm not a big believer in the registration fee for conferences and so forth. I think, I think the strategy instead of registration should be two words, trust God, bless the people, feed the people, give it away for free, and then trust God to bring in the increase. And you know how God does that? God does it through generous supporters, through free will offerings. In other words, you don't lock them into a price and say, you have to pay this in order to get it. You give it to them and you say, do what the Holy Spirit's led you to give. So I want to invite you right now to help 
support this ministry so that we can keep going and growing strong. Even in the midst of everything that's happening right now, our ministry is growing and we're affecting and impacting more parts of the world than ever before. I think already we've had over 500 people just in the last couple of weeks get, get saved just through our live streams alone. And this is where I need your help. I need you today to consider becoming a monthly supporter of our ministry. You can become a supporter for $10 a month, $30 a month, $100 a month, or any amount. When you sign up to become my partner, you're, you're joining with me. It's like a subscription fee, you know, like some of you pay for Netflix. Some of you are partnered with Netflix. Some of you are partnered with PlayStation Plus. Some of you are partnered with Xbox. Some of you are partnered with the coffee bean of the month. I don't know, whatever the subscriptions are that you have. Why not also partner with the gospel by saying, you know what, I can't, I can't afford to take care of all the ministry needs, but I can afford to take care of my small part. I'm going to do my part to give to that ministry that they might continue to go and grow. And so I'm asking you, partner with us today, $10, $30, or $100 a month. Do that today. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Partner. And the rest of you who are not quite there with the monthly partnerships, do something one time. Give a one-time gift today. We have people who give 100. We have people who give 1,000. We even have sometimes people will, will bless the ministry with six-figure gifts. And that brings an influx of things that we're able to do and events that we're able to host. And it really helps us continue to move forward. So do that right now. If you feel connected with us, if you feel like you and I have a connection in the Spirit, if you've been blessed by this ministry in any way, if we've impacted your life with the gospel message, then I'm asking you, step out in faith today give a one-time gift or sign up to become a monthly ministry supporter. And I would surely appreciate it if you did that, that the gospel might go forward, that we might best bless these people like uh, Chizoba, who says, I couldn't, you know, basically Chizoba is saying, I couldn't afford it. And this has been provided to me for free now. Let's continue to bless people around the world with the word of God. Sign up today, become my partner or give a one-time gift. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Do that right now. And that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.